Hello and welcome back. So, in today's video, we're gonna take a look at one of Harley Benton's kit guitars. It's the Telecaster style one. It's called the T-style, but I mean, we all know that it's a Telecaster. I'm gonna focus more on the wood than maybe the electronics, but I'm also gonna give you my opinion if this is a good way to start building guitars or if you should do something else. And we're gonna talk a little bit about it. I come at this from the perspective of building guitars. So if you see things differently than me, we can definitely talk about it in the comments below. But please don't be offended if there is something in here that I don't like because I just, you know, that's the way I sort of look at things. I absolutely think that if you wanna build one of these guitars, you should go ahead and not focus too much on what I have to say. I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't or should do this. I'm just giving you my opinions and you do what you want with that information basically is what I'm trying to say. So let's just open this box up and see what you get when you when you get one of these. Okay, so here we have the box. It's basically the way it comes. It comes obviously in a bigger box that will take the, you know, hits and dings from being sent to you. But when you open that box, this is what it looks like. And so you have to flip it over because there are some tape and you need to find a knife and just cut this away. And so now we can open this. And here we have some instructions. Yeah, this one is in German, so could be useful if you beat that language. And this one is in English. This is basically a how-to, so you don't need to watch a video on how to put these together. You can just read this. It's probably good, but I don't know. I'm gonna take a closer look at it later. So let's just take one of these boxes and open them up and see what's in. It's nice that it comes in three different boxes because I assume this is the neck, I mean, obviously. I don't know if you can see that over here. That will be the neck because it's longer package. But anyway, it's nice that they come in different ones because you don't want, for example, hardware or something like that to ding up your neck while it's being shipped to you. And here we have all the hardware and electronic components. Plus, I can see already a cable, which is nice if you don't have that. So here we have the pick card and I'm just gonna give you a quick look over because we're gonna focus on the wood. I know I've already said that, but so it's some sort of standard tele neck. It comes with clip-ons so that you don't have to solder. And hmm, yes, I do actually have a thought on that, but we'll we'll save that for a little bit later. But that's basically the kind of pickup that I can see it from the way it looks and from building guitars and repairing guitars for a long time now. That's basically the kind of pickup you would get in like some sort of like, let's call it Squire Bulletin level of guitar. It doesn't mean that it's bad. I don't know what it sounds like, but it's not a custom shop uh, hand wound pickup, which I don't think anyone was expecting. But nevertheless, let's continue. There's a plate, probably okay. And here's the bridge. And the bridge looks okay, I suppose. Probably the same thing here, quality wise. It would be something along the lines of a of a Squire or the less expensive models of the Harley Bentons. Uh, ceramic magnet on the back here. And uh, yeah, just standard beginner guitar parts, basically, is what I'm trying to call it, I suppose. And here's the cable and an Allen wrench, which is what you need to adjust the height of the strings and the relief of the neck. Not a special cable, but it's probably good enough. Here are some strings. They are generic, no brand. They're probably fine, especially for like doing a guitar setup. Uh, so I, I don't know. It's good that you get strings, I suppose, because you can use the strings and you can throw them away when you're 100% happy with the guitar and put on the strings you actually like. So it's nice that you get strings. And here we have the control plate for the guitar. Let's take it out of its bag. Okay, so here we have a output jack already soldered to connections. You have two more of these connections. I don't know if you can see anything. But you basically plug things in and it's probably, yes, these are the plugs where your neck and bridge pickup will go. And volume control, they are very loose, these knobs. There is basically no resistance at all, which it completely depends on what kind of uh, player you are and what you like. The knob has a little bit of resistance. I kind of like the switch for what it is. I mean, it's not the highest quality switch, but I've seen a lot of these sort of switches in uh, guitars that are worse than this one. So I would say, considering what it is we get, I, I would say this is a good switch. The control knobs 
themselves look nice. The actual metal knob, they feel really good actually. Not slippery or anything, but they do move a little bit too easy for me. But yeah, and again, I would say that this is what you see inside of a less expensive guitar. A new beginner guitar. Squire Bulletin or the lowest priced Harley Benton. Here are some screws. They are probably about the same quality as the rest. I'm not gonna take them out of the bag right now because I feel like that might be uh, pointless at this particular moment. Here are some tuners and they are, I can tell already, they are the same kind of basic tuners you get on your first beginner guitar. So let's put all of this back in this box and close it up. Let's take a look at the body first and then Let's take a look at the neck. So here we have the body. It comes in a, its own box, which is super nice because you don't want anything to fall around and get dinged. So the packaging is really nice, or at least I think it's good. And it gets bubble wrap, which is nice because, again, it would make me sad to see it dinged up. And here we have the body. It has some weight to it. I can't really tell you what wood it is. I'll zoom in and take a closer look. It feels really nice and smooth overall. It has some things I want to point out. Um, you decide for yourself if you, these things are deal breakers or anything. But remember this kit is I think like 89 euros. So yeah, it's not that much. There are a lot of more expensive kits. It's very smooth. Like, I don't feel like you would have to sand this anymore. You could paint it immediately. The routing on the neck and the bridge pickup are really nice. I feel like the pocket for the neck is too, but we'll have to fit the neck, see if it actually fits. This cavity though, I don't know if you can see it, but they've, I don't know, it's, I'm gonna see if I can show you. It's really sloppily made. How am I gonna show you? I don't know if you can, can you see that? It's, first of all, it doesn't need to have this little in-between part here. They could have just removed that. It has tear outs on the inside. How, how am I gonna show you this? I need a super tiny little camera. I don't know if you can see that right there. There is some tear out. All things considered, I'd say that's okay because it's not a very expensive kit, but I don't know. There are some tear outs. The cavities are a little bit sloppy. There is, there is still like dust wood in here and other things. So it looks a little bit, I don't know. They clearly could have spent a little bit extra time. Also here I can see right now. I don't know if you, you can see that on the camera, but it's wavy in its shape. It's not, it's not straight like this. It's a little bit like this right here. So I don't know if that's gonna show up when we put in the neck. So if you look at this in the light, if, They've sprayed some sort of sanding sealer on it. They haven't really done a super good job. Again, there are kits that you can buy that cost more than the double of this kit. But if you, I don't know if you can see this, but there are spots where they should have gone over again. Very easy to see right here. For example, the issue is that if you spray paint this guitar the way it is right now, because it's already been sealed, you might think you could do that. And then when the paint dry, it will start to sink in in these spots here, where the paint is, um, where there is no sanding sealer basically, because that's the issue. And so you would have all these weird places where it bleed through basically, that's what it's called. And that basically means that if you look at a professional finished guitar, you know, something that you buy, like for example, a, let's say Fender, they have a, a mirror-like finish on the top. And that's because the lacquer isn't allowed to sink into the wood and disappear. And you would get the same finish on this guitar, except for these places here where the lacquer would sink in and you would see the grain through. I don't have a guitar like that to show you, so I can't really explain it better than that, but that would be an issue. So basically, I will have to sand this guitar again and put on more sanding sealer. Again, the kit isn't very expensive, and I don't like to say that, hey, it's okay because it wasn't that expensive, but at the same time, you sort of get what you pay for, I suppose. I don't know what to say. It's a two-piece body, so that's nice. It's some sort of basswood, I think. It's not basswood because basswood has a different color, but it's something close to basswood. I think this could be a good guitar. 
I don't think that the wood in this body will hold it back a lot. It seems very straight grained and solid. I think this could turn out to be a really nice guitar, but it does have a lot of work that needs to be done. Let's look at the neck. So it comes in its own package like this, which is nice. It comes in a bubble wrap. It's also good because it'd be sad if it was dinged up. And here it is. Now let's see here. It's already been finished somewhat. It's very smooth, feels nice. I think this neck is gonna be good. We're gonna take a little closer look on the wood grain. But first off, I don't know what this wood is. I can't really tell. It because on the website it says something like something closer to like purple heart or something i don't know actually i should have had the specs from thomas website in front of me but i don't but it looks i don't know if the camera can pick it up i don't know this doesn't it doesn't even really look like wood to be perfectly honest yeah i don't know it looks fine the fretboard it feels like it's a pretty good piece of piece of wood. The neck is straight and the grain is straight. There's a little tiny gap here in the heel. I don't think the camera is going to show it. I'm going to have to put a tiny bit of super glue in it, I think. Everything is pre-drilled and so basically all we have to do is put this together. Oh, this is weird. Why didn't I see that immediately? Look at that weird transition here. Why have they done it like that? I don't know if you can see that, or maybe you can, I don't know. It, it's very, I don't know. I, I mean, I shouldn't say that it's weird, but to me it is because I like to make sure that your hand moves up. So, yeah. Which means that if I want to reshape this to have a more rounded, natural transition here, I'm gonna have to sand the entire neck. It's also one of those things, I don't know. Okay, so here's my first complaint, maybe. I don't know if any of this that I'm saying is useful to any of you, but I kind of wish they would have left the wood raw. Maybe it has to do with like shipping and things like that, that it makes it difficult to move, but I don't know what's on this neck and I don't know what's on this body. I don't know if it's like a water-based sealer or if it's a spirit-based or, you know, I don't know. So that means that if, let's say I wanted to make a vintage Strat, a Telecaster, I mean, inspired guitar and I wanted to lacquer this in a cool amber color and make it look, you know, like those old guitars do. And I know the fretboard is the wrong kind of wood for that. But anyway, how would I do that? I'm gonna have to take a quick look in these instructions and see if it says something about sanding sealer. It doesn't seem to say in the instructions safety instruction okay, painting the body and neck page seven okay let's see here if it says what it is it doesn't seem to say wait to okay um i mean the instructions seems very good so that's something that's good but it doesn't seem to say what kind of sanding sealer it is on and maybe it doesn't really matter i don't actually know because i've never mixed up the kind of sanding sealer I have with the kind of paint I'm using. I don't know, it's annoying. This shape here is actually annoying. It's like, actually, this is so distracting that I'm kind of... Ooh, I don't know what to say. I hate this. I actually, I, I, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm starting to get kind of angry. I'm sorry, I'm, this was not supposed to happen. This is really annoying. I don't know if you can see that. That's like, it's almost like it's poking out. It's almost like they're trying to make something to stab my hand like I can feel it immediately ah uh, sorry oh uh, sorry 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 didn't mean to go there okay so let's see how this fit now keep in mind it has an overhang here which we're gonna have to make this look nicer but it will hang over here so the body might not fit in the um, heel so let's just put this here and see it fits but it's not very tight I don't know how well you can see. I would say that that is perfectly fine, especially considering the price. But I, I do like neck pockets to be so tight that if you let go of the body, it stays put, which 
this, I mean, it could obviously be a little bit tighter, but it doesn't matter. This is gonna be a good guitar. We're gonna put this together and it's gonna be amazing. So yeah, I'm just gonna put this together now real quick and we're gonna, I don't know, we're gonna play it. The only thing I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna take the nut out and I'm gonna switch it around because I have to put the strings on the other way because I'm left-handed. So yeah, let's do that real quick. They could have color coded these wires here because you get a red and a white coming out from the pickups and the white one is the bridge and so they could have had a white here and that would have made it very simple to know what kind of connections you're gonna have and now you have this entire mess of cable and you have to just try to push everything into this and close it up not something I would say that I like about this kit, but never mind. But it looks kind of cool. I could totally dig this. The pickguard is a little bit sloppy made. I don't know if you can see that. And I, I don't know. It sort of depends on your, uh, let's call it reason for buying. If you want something that is like completely solid and like, oh, I don't, I have to do anything, I get everything I need, I can build a guitar and have fun. I can spend a weekend, you know, making a guitar. Then maybe this is actually kind of sucky, that you will, you know, I don't know, either smooth this out by hand and live with it, or have to live well with it the way it is, or buy a new pickguard. I don't know, sort of depends on how you want things. I wish they would come in bigger bags, because I'm having real issue taking things out. Maybe it's because this is not made for someone with, like, big hands or something, but I feel, I don't know, discriminated. Hello! So, it's the next day. I've had the guitar for a couple of hours now, and I've played it and tried it out. These are my thoughts about it right now. As you most likely can hear, there's a lot of hum and it has to do with the fact that these pickups are not that great. It also has to do with the fact that there is a lot of wires inside of the harness here and you have the clips. Uh, yeah, it's not a great setup. This is the bridge pickup and this is what it sounds like. And as you can hear, when I switch to the neck pickup, which is what I'm playing right now, still a lot of hum. Now, if you redid the wiring in this guitar and you shortened some of the wires and maybe you twisted them around themselves, you could get down the hum a bunch, but it will never go really quiet. To me, this is too much hum. Anyway, if I put it in the middle, a lot of the hum disappear, but I can still hear a significant amount. This level of hum is sort of what I would have wanted it to be when it was just one of the pickups. But this is how they sound together. The tone. It feels like it's a lot of the tone is just in the very beginning and then you roll it to nothing so here to here and then the rest is just nothing and that's you know beginner guitars or lower priced guitars they're usually always like that. The same thing goes for the volume, but it's not as extreme. So, 
So, who is this guitar for, you might ask? And obviously, if you want to buy this guitar and build it, you should do that. It can be a lot of fun. It took me about 10 minutes to put together. I wasn't rushing or anything like that. Uh, I would say that this is like a weekend project or something like that. Obviously, you're gonna have to do a couple of things. Like, for example, you're gonna have to paint the body. And you're gonna have to cut out the headstock and give it the shape you want. Now, there are a couple of things to think about when it comes to this. It is a nice guitar. It's not a very high-end guitar. So if you're a beginner guitarist and you feel like, oh, I can get around the fact that a more high-level guitar is expensive by putting one of these kits together, I think you're gonna be disappointed because this is not a better quality than buying, for example, a Squire. You can make this a higher quality instrument by putting a lot of time and money into it. The wood is perfectly fine. It's straight grained, seems to be solid and somewhat high quality. The fretboard I'm a little bit confused about because it says on the website that this should be Purple Heart and definitely isn't. I've seen Purple Heart before, so I can tell you that this isn't Purple Heart and it might actually be something else. I'm not even sure if it actually is wood because it looks kind of plastic. It doesn't affect the playability of the instrument. Kind of easy to play. You'll have to make a setup on the guitar, intonate it, make sure the string height is the way you want it, and you'll probably have to level the frets. It sort of depends on the string height you're after. This guitar right now has a string height of a little over a millimeter. My preference is that that is a bit too high, and if I want to go lower, I'll have to level the frets, because they are a little bit uneven. If you want to build a guitar for fun, you can buy this kit but you're gonna have to switch everything out because the parts that you get, except for the wood, are not really high quality. And for example, this bridge, the holes for it wasn't really centered perfectly and I didn't think that would be a problem. So I screwed it in place. And the bridge is made of such a soft material that the screw holes being a little off center bent the entire bridge. As you can hopefully see, if you look right there, it is bending upwards. And I wish that Toman would maybe have two options. One where you buy the kit and you just get the wood and it's a little bit less expensive. Or one where you buy everything. Because if you've played guitar for let's say two years, you're gonna wanna switch everything except the wood out for nicer parts. So I would say that this kit, the way it is now, is for someone who has a kid and they wanna build a guitar together with their child, it will be a fun weekend project. It will take a couple of hours and your kid will have something fun to play with. If you actually wanna learn how to build guitars, I think I'm gonna make a video on how to do it on like how you're gonna start and things like that. But this is not where I would start. This kit comes with everything that you need to learn about building guitars already made for you and you are just assembling it. I hope that this video is helping you and that you're getting the information that you need to make a decision on whether or not you should buy this. Don't listen to me too much, go with your own guts. If you are a fan of Mike Bloomfield and you know what happened to his guitar, and also how it became a left-handed guitar. Maybe you'll enjoy seeing what I'm gonna do with this kit guitar. And if you do, I would appreciate if you liked, commented, and subscribed. And that's all for now. Stay awesome and cool, and go and build something. Maybe a kit guitar?